Hi guys, my name is Alexis. So I'm going to talk about a, a supervised uh, machine learning approach to ARV. This is my outline. I'm going to tell you what is machine learning, when is it appropriate to use, how it's used in finance, and how can it be applied to ARV. What is machine learning? Essentially, it is a method of teaching computers to make and improve predictions or behaviors based on some data. Another way to think about machine learning is that it is pattern recognition, the act of teaching a program to react to or recognize patterns. This is a, a visual explanation of what machine learning is. You have a bunch of data, and there's this program. You take that data, you dump it on that program, and then that program will generate a, a model. So um, when is machine learning appropriate to use? There are three things that you need in order to even consider using machine learning. One, a pattern exists. Two, a pattern exists, but you can't pin it down mathematically. And three, lots and lots of data. So if you have those three things, then machine learning is actually feasible. So one, ARB patterns exist. Now, what do I mean by that? If you have high CR scores, it's going to lead to high hit rates. If you have uh, a high amount of matching data, it's in general going to be to high hit rate. If you have a larger disparity, it's going to be to high hit rate. And if you have better sketches, it's going to be to high hit rate. And in general, that's usually ag agreed upon. The, the opposite is it's also true. But it doesn't always mean that if you have a low CR score that it's going to be a miss. But in general, there's a, a sort of a, there's a sort of a pattern to it. These different variables the confidence ranking, the disparity, those are all just different variables. So in reality, it's not always clean cut. You'll have a high confidence ranking, but you have a low um, disparity. There is no magical equation that I can tell you, a polynomial equation to the nth degree or something like that, that will tell you it's a hit or a miss. We don't have that equation. So we can't really pin it down mathematically, but we know that there's a pattern. So uh, we go back to the slide. When is machine learning appropriate to use? One, a pattern exists. Yes. Two, a pattern exists, but we can't pin it down mathematically. We have that. And three, lots and lots of data. Now, we don't have that yet, but the five precognition project, that, that's what it's, it's all about. It's about gathering data and uh, collecting all this data. So in preparation, machine learning is going to be actually feasible once we have all that data. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example of, of how it's actually used in, in the real world. And the example that I'm going to talk about is credit approval. Now, when, when you go to a bank and you're trying to get um, your credit approved or your loan approved, um, the bank needs to know whether or not you're a good customer or a bad customer. What's a good customer? A good customer is a person who will make that bank profit. And a bad customer is a customer who makes that bank lose money. So to the bankers, it's all about profit. And the way they figure out whether or not you're approved or you're denied is they make you fill out this application. And that this application has different variables. They, they make you fill out your age, your gender, your annual salary. Now, those variables themselves, they don't necessarily mean that they're going to be profitable. So, for example, if you're making 50 grand a year, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be profitable if you have a current debt of $200,000 a year. There's a pattern to all these different variables, but by themselves, they don't mean that you're going to be profitable. They all match together, and you're either going to be profitable or, or, uh, or a loss. So the bankers don't have this magic equation that they can plug in and then they say, this person is going to be 100% profitable or this person is going to be 100% a loss of money. They don't have that equation. So what do the bankers do? They have a whole bunch of historical data and they take this historical data, they dump it into machine learning or some, some kind of program that runs through it and it generates financial models. These financial models are then applied to new applicants, and 
these applicants are supposed to be profitable based on uh, these financial models. Just to summarize, they have a, a whole bunch of data. They dump it into a machine learning. The machine generates financial models. And these financial models are then applied to the new applicants who are supposed to be profitable. The whole process continues and it gets better and better as, as more data is accumulated. Now, in, in a typical ARB session, there are different um, attributes or different variables. There's the, the CR score, there's the disparity, uh, the matching percentage, the, the sketches, and the different perceptions. And they by themselves don't, don't necessarily mean that you're going to get a hit or a miss. But somehow, all these variables come together and um, produce a hit or a miss. We just, we just don't have this magical equation. So in 2012, shortly after the Irva conference, Rick Hilliard introduced me to Marty Rosenblatt. And long story short, I was, was given the, the privilege and honor to, to look over Marty's uh, 2012 ARB historical data. What would have happened is that um, we would have taken this data and put it into a, um, some kind of machine or a program to, to analyze it for us. Well, we, we don't have that. And so I did the next best thing, and I analyzed the data. So with the initial sample of 150 plus predictions, which is um, basically what Marty gave, I removed the sessions that resulted in passes, and I, I removed the sessions that resulted in pushes, and removed the sessions with this data. I just couldn't use them. And with the remaining uh, about 100 predictions, I, use, I simply used mathematical regressions and deficit lines to generate two hit models. So what I did, I took those hit models that I, I, I made and I applied the new ARV session. And what I found out was that they, they sucked. Uh, <laughs> right, right. So the first model was only 34% hit rate. So what, what, what do I mean by this? So I applied this, this, uh, this model this equation on the ARV session and it tells me this is going to be a hit but it turns out to be a miss and the next model was a little bit better but it, it still wasn't it wasn't good enough I mean it's, it's pretty it's pretty bad right here so I said to myself okay how can, how can we make this better and I said all right well let's we, we, need, we need a machine or we need a program that we can dump into and um, the machine should be able to do it for us. And so I said, okay, well, I'll just, it, it can't be that hard. I'll just make my own. So um, I, I developed this algorithm, which I didn't really develop, but the, the process of developing this algorithm, I basically stole this from the 1970s and just copied their algorithm. Um, this algorithm is called the perceptron learning algorithm. Basically what it does is that there's an input X and X could mean the confidence ranking. The, the second X can mean the disparity, but the, these are just the attributes of an RV session. Each of these attributes are given a certain weight and there's a, a certain threshold and if, if the sum of all these attributes and weights are greater than the threshold, then it, you can project a hit. But if it's less than the threshold, we project a miss. We don't know the weight values, and we don't know the threshold. So we need to figure out what, what, are, the, what are the weight values for, for all these different attributes. Um, what you see here is um, basically 12 different attributes. For example, sketches, matches, non-matches, uncertainty, or maybe those, those perceptions that you're, you're not really sure how to grade, and the confidence ranking. But there's 12 different attributes that I was able to recognize. And attributes 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, those attributes are specific only to the program. But um, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. It's kind of complicated. But in the very beginning, we don't know what the weight values are. So what we do is, what I did was I basically set all of them to plus one. Now, 
since we don't know what the weight values are, we have to correct the, these weight values. So I'm just going to uh, isolate just one, one of the attributes. We're going to take a look at sketches. And this is an example of what, what the program does and, and how it corrects its weight values. We have this RB section. And we, we take out everything except for this sketch. And if we look at where if we're looking at only the sketches, it, it will either support the overside or the underside. And if it's if we were, if we're saying that it supports the overside and the actual data is actually over, then we add a plus one to that weight value. But if we're saying that it supports the overside and in, in actuality the result is under then we do minus one to its original weight value. So it started at, at one, and if it supports the over and it was actually over, we add plus one. But if it's wrong, we subtract one. And it's vice versa for the other side. Does anybody have questions on this slide? Okay, good. So this is the weight values after 63 RV sessions associated with hits. Now, um, you can see that certain attributes of an RV session are given more weight and certain attributes are given less weight. So for this particular program, um, sketches are valued less and matches are valued pretty high over here. And this, this attribute right here, um, attribute 10, Looks like it doesn't even matter. But anyways, um, what the, the point is is that we started off with having weight values at plus one, and now we have corrected weight values. So um, we know what the weight values are. Now what? We need to determine the threshold. Now, what you see here is, is basically uh, 120 plus RV sessions. On the left side right here, I basically took these weight values and re-entered them into all the previous RV sessions. On the right is the associated hit or miss. So uh, these are the sum, the sum of the weight values, and this is our associated hit or miss. And these are all separate RV sessions. How do we determine the threshold? We can see uh, a general pattern that if the, the sum of all the, the weight values are all negative 300 or it's less than negative 350, they're all misses. Let's focus on this thing right here. This looks like a good threshold. We can see from this point that if it's greater than 264, they're all hits. But if it's less than that, there are mostly misses. So we know what the weight values are. Or we know what threshold values are. Right, let's do this. This is an example of a future RV session, and we're going to apply it to an RV session. So what, the, this, what this program spits out is an associated plus one or minus one, whether or not it supports or doesn't support a particular session. So this particular RV session, uh, the sketches supported the prediction. The matching didn't support the prediction, and et cetera. So these ones right here are, are just attributes, are the attributes of the RV session. These are the associated weight values. And we basically take the product of all these, um, these values, and we get a sum. So we're looking at this equation. And um, is this true? No, it's not true. So we can assume that this session is going to be a miss. And in, in, if, if everything was a perfect world, then this is going to be an actual miss. So whether or not it's a, it's a hit or a miss doesn't really matter. Because if it's a hit, the weight values are reinforced. But if it's a miss, the, the weight values are corrected, and the threshold values are updated, the algorithm improves. Join the remote viewing Facebook group, and we need, we need more likes in the Applied Precognitions project page. 